Okay, lesson 16, discrete time Markov chain, steady state probabilities. So let's assume we have a discrete time Markov chain that is ergodic. All states and the chain are aperiodic and recurrent, and it's irreducible, which means we have one class only in this Markov chain. So in this system, we're going to find pi of j as being the long run proportion of time that the system spends in state j. So in other words, let's take this system right here. Three states, we want to know the probability of time that over the long run the system is in state 0, state 1, or state 2. So we have a couple equations. Let's start off with this one. The limit, as you take an infinite number of transitions of going from some state i, any state i, into j, is going to be pi of j. So the limit of the probability that you transition into state j is j which will also give you the proportion of time you're spending in state j. Now, we also have our set of equations. So these guys are what you're going to use to calculate your steady state probabilities. So the long run probability that you are in state j, that the system is in state j, is just the sum across all of the possible states of the probability of going from each state into j times that limiting probability of being in state i. So the long run probability of starting in state i. And you have one of these equations for each state j. So to go that again, so for each landing state, if you will, the limiting probability, the long run probability that you are in that state j, the one that you're going to end up in at the end of the transition, is the sum of the long run probability of state i, of all the states that go into state j, times the, the single step probability of going from i to j for each, or for all of the possible states. I'll show you how to use this in a second. The other equation that we need is total probability. So this just says the sum of all of the long run probabilities of all the states sum up to 1. So. Let's take this example. Three-step transition matrix, or three-step three three-state system. Here's our transition matrix. And we want to calculate the long-term probability of being in any one of those steps. So we're going to start off with pi of zero. So the probabilities of transitioning into state zero are all going to be on this column, this first column. So we just read it off like so. So we're going to say pi naught, the long-term probability being state 0, of pi in state 0 is going to be 0.7 times pi naught, or pi of 0, plus 0.4 times pi 1, which is the single step transition probability from pi 1 to pi 0, from, excuse me, from state 1 to state 0, times the long run probability of being in state one. So, and then the probability of going from state two to zero in one step is zero, so we're gonna leave that one off. Now, this column is gonna give you the probabilities of transitioning to state one. So, we're gonna have the long run probability of being in state one is equal to 0 0.2 times the long run probability of being in state zero plus 0 0.6 times pi 1 plus 1 times pi 2, which came from down here. So the one step probability, the one step transition probability of going from 2 into 1 is just 1. And the long run probability that you started in state 2 is pi 2. OK, same thing goes for the last column. So transitioning in state 2, there's only one state that transitions into state 2, and that's state 0. And we can verify that up here with the diagram. So now we're going to say pi of 2 is just 0 0.1 times pi 0. And to finish off, we have pi, one, pi 0 plus pi 1 plus pi 2 equals 1. So they have to sum to 1. So this gives us a system of equations that we can solve to get the long run transition probabilities. Okay, the left, sorry, the long run steady state probabilities of being in each one of those states in the system. Now we can also read these on the diagram 
So if we filled in our probabilities over here, we would add up the probabilities of coming into each state times the long run probability of wherever that came from. So from here, for example, translating the matrix up, this is a 0 0.7, that was 0 0.6, 0 0.0, sorry, 0.1, um, 0 to 1 was 0 0.2, 1 to 0, 0.4, 2 to 1 goes with probability 1. Let's see, what am I missing? That's it. So, okay. So, I look at all of the limiting probability, or the probabilities of coming into state 0. So, from going from 0 into 0, that's 0 0.7. So, 0 0.7 times pi naught. Going from 1 into 0, 0.4. So, 0.4 times 0.1 goes here. So, you can either read the probabilities times... For, for each arrow coming, or each arc coming into the state, times the limiting probability of the state it came from, or you can read it down the columns of the transition matrix. I like to use the transition matrix. I think that's a little bit easier. Anyway, so once you have these, you can either use algebra, matrix algebra, whichever you prefer to solve for the quantities, and you can come up with the steady state probabilities.